you have been chosen. It doesn't matter how many looked like they were worthy to be called. It doesn't matter how many looked like they belonged to that. It does not matter the background that we know. The important thing is you were found and you were called. Hello there and praise be to Jesus. Welcome to our show yet again, The Marvelous Believers Show with me, Lucy Lepore, and with you, because you are the marvelous believer. You are the marvelous believer we are talking about, and this show is exclusively for us, exclusively for people that have been made marvelous, people that have been removed from darkness and brought to the marvelous light. Praise be to Jesus. And that's who we are, and that's who we shall remain until Christ comes for us. So welcome once again. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for always finding time to be with us, to fellowship with us. It is always a pleasure. And tonight I want to talk about us, how we became included into the family of God. Because you and me have become included. We have become part of the family of God. We have become the sons of God. We are in the family of the beloved. So tonight I just want us to discuss a little bit of how we became included so that there will never be a doubt whatsoever that you are part of this family. There will never be a doubt that you belong to this family. When I look at the church history or the story in the Bible, not just church history, the history of life from the time man was created, I see a time when man belonged to God. Man was a spirit, man was in fellowship with God, and then man fell. After man fell, if you have followed up the stories in the Old Testament, you realize that God worked with the house of Israel, and that's the Jews, to, to accomplish his redemption story or his redemption plan. He worked throughout the Old Testament. We are seeing God with the children of Israel. The backsliding, the coming back, the sacrificing, and everything was to do with God and the children of Israel. And us, the Gentiles, were nowhere to be included. We were not considered. We were not part of that plan. We were not in the, we, we did not exist, I should say, in that plan. We were in total darkness, but God being God, we are now included. That's why I want us to talk about it. That's why I want us to trace how it came around. And I believe God is going to bless you. May the Lord bless you as you continue watching and let's be blessed. Now, as I'm saying, when the history began, on when man fell, God worked with the children of Israel. Throughout history, we see them going away from God, God calling them back. They come, they repent, they sacrifice, they go back to God and they fall again. And that was the trend. Even when God was giving the Ten Commandments, the laws, it was never actually for us. I don't even know why we chose to adopt the laws because it was exclusively for the children of Israel. He was trying to put them in order. He was concerned about them. He wanted to keep them to himself. He was making sure that they don't fall away from him because he had a covenant with David that he needed to maintain it. So throughout, um, as we see, even when he was giving the Ten Commandments, he was still working on how to maintain this family of Israel to himself. Like I'm saying, he had a covenant, sorry, with Abraham, not with David. David came later with Abraham. So um, it came a time now after the old, after the, the old Testament prophets had prophesied and everything. Time came when Jesus himself came as it had been prophesied uh, in the Old Testament. And when Jesus came, the story became different. Actually, if you read the book of Matthew, the angels who announced the coming of Jesus, they said, light has shone to people who lived in darkness. Beyond the people who lived in darkness have seen a great light. They were talking about us, the Gentiles. We were in total darkness. Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, Paul says, we were alienated and separated from the covenant of Israel. We were not part of it. We were in total darkness. But glory be to Jesus. When the birth of Jesus was announced, the angel said, the people who lived in great darkness have seen the light. And that is us. That is how we came around. That is how we got found. That is how you and me. And I want to 
to talk about the Gentiles being included, but I want you to 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 consider this also to be like part of how you as an individual also got included. Because each one of us, the Bible says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We were all in darkness at one time. Not even as Gentiles, but even as me as an individual and as you as an individual. And how did God, how God sought for us, how God found us, how God called us, and how he has included us into this marvelous light. How he has included you into this marvelous family. Praise be to Jesus. So the Bible says we were without God, we were without hope, we were without, we were alienated from the family of Israel, we were in darkness, but Jesus came. Praise be to Jesus. So I want to read uh, a parable that Jesus gave in the Gospel of John. And that's just uh, one of the stories or the parables. When Jesus was about to depart or when he was about to die, I noticed that towards the end of his ministry, he started introducing the idea of he actually came for everyone. He start, because all the time, even as they were in, with the apostles in the Gospels, you realize that they were preaching to the Jews. They were only concerned with the Jews and the Gentiles were not part of the story. But before Jesus left, he was careful to introduce the idea of I came for everyone. It was a perfect sacrifice. It was a complete work. I was not going to go for the Jews and come again for anyone else. I came for mankind. I came for the man that God my father created. I came to make men the sons that God created. And so I realized towards the end of his ministry, he starts introducing those elements of everyone being included. And that is how when after he had uh, died, resurrected, sat on the right hand of the father, he now called Paul. And Paul tells us that he has been called for the Gentiles. So Jesus became so intentional that even the Gentiles are included. And so I want to read this parable that he gave us in the book of Matthew chapter uh, 22. It is the parable of the wedding feast. Of course, it's a parable that some of us are quite familiar with. But let's just read it and see how it is just a good picture of how we were found, how we were included, how we became part of this family, how it can never be otherwise. We are so included that we cannot get out. We are so included that we cannot be removed. There is not, Paul says what can separate us from the love of God, not even angels, not even demons. Nothing can remove you from the family of God. So the parable goes like this. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding and they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and fattened cattle are killed. And all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their ways. One on his own farm, another to his business. I'm sure here Jesus is referring to the Jews. Because the wedding feast was prepared for them. The platform was theirs. The calling was theirs. But they made light of it. And uh, just let me jump to verse 8. He said, then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those who are invited were not worthy. Therefore go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Praise be to Jesus. It's beautiful to be chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. And if you are listening to me in this show, and you are, uh, you are hearing my voice, you are the marvelous believer. You have been chosen. 
It doesn't matter how many looked like they were worthy to be called. It doesn't matter how many looked like they belonged to that. You have been chosen. That is what matters. When the, when the, according to the parable that Jesus gave, because he's referring to the family of Israel, he called them, he gave them the platform, he gave them the opportunity, but they took light of it. And then he said, go to the highways, go all over to the streets and call everyone. The Bible says they went and gathered even the good and the bad. It does not matter if you have been chosen. It does not matter how you were. It does not matter who you were. It does not matter the background that we know. Everyone was invited. Everyone was brought into this house. The unworthy, the uncalled, it doesn't matter. Those who are not known, those who are known. Those who are found like uh, uh, they have it all. Those who are dirty, those who are in rags, everyone. It does not matter where you are called from. The important thing is that you were found and you were called. And you have been made a marvelous believer. You have been made marvelous. Praise be to Jesus. From that point on, that's where I want to bring the idea of how we became sons. Because we were called into this uh, house. We were called into this feast. We have been invited. Our background is forever forgotten. It doesn't matter how you are found. The Bible says when they came, when the, guest, the king came, he found one person without a wedding robe. And he wondered how did you get in here without that robe? Because... Everyone in, the, in those days, in the East, those times, anyone who invited people to the wedding, they would come and they would be given the, the gowns to put on the wedding garments. They would come and they would be clothed. So when these people came from wherever, the good and the bad, the ragged, the hustlers, wherever, even if you were busy hawking somewhere on the streets, you were brought in here. The first thing that happened is you came in and you were given a wedding garment. So that when we sit on this table, we are all sons, we are all invited, we are all worthy. We look, we are in the right place at the right time. Nobody looks like they, were, they deserved it better than another. We have been made sons. The Bible says when Christ ascended, when he rose from the dead, he rose with us. We were inside him. He rose again with us. He died with us, we died with him and we rose in him. Praise be to Jesus. And the Bible reckons that he became the firstborn from the dead. He was the first person to rise. What does that mean? Because we know there are many people who died before Christ. Even the, the prophets of the Old Testament, people like the main people we know, the Davids and everyone, they actually died. But the Bible says Jesus became the firstborn from the dead because he was the first person to rise from the dead. The rising we are talking about is rising in um, spiritual spiritual uh, rising. The Bible says we were dead in our sins. Even now, if you are, someone is not born again, they are dead in their sins. And we have been made alive. So uh, physically speaking, we have, as we are listening to each other today, we have never been dead. But the Bible records that we were dead in our trespass, but we've been made alive. That is what I'm talking about. When Jesus died, he died in sin. He was made sin. And he rose, and the Bible says, we rose in him. So we were made alive in him. Praise be to Jesus. So he became our firstborn. We became his, he became our firstborn. We became the brothers. No wonder before Jesus left, he actually uh, told the disciples, I no longer call you servants. But friends, he had not yet died because after he died and rose with us in him, we actually became joint heirs of the kingdom. We became his brothers. The Bible records he is not ashamed to call us his brethren. But he was telling the disciples, even while they were still here, he was telling them, I no longer call you servants because servants do not know the secrets of the father. Listen to me, marvelous believer. We like, I know we like uh, in our humility, we like saying, I am a servant of God. We are servants. Yes, we may be serving in our father's kingdom, but the servant mentality must not be, we must remove them. We, sometimes we say we are servants, but we, we carry a servant mentality. We are not servants. Jesus told the disciples, I no longer call you servants. I call you my friends because servants do not know the things of the the master. They do not know the plans of the master. For us, we have been taken into the heavenly places. We are seated in the right hand of the Father. We have become spirit beings. We are able to discern the things of the spirit. 
And so we can we are not servants. We know the things of the kingdom are no longer mysteries to us. They've been revealed to us through the spirit. We are not just servants. We may be serving in the kingdom of our father, but we are not servants. We do not carry a servant mentality. We are sons of the kingdom. Praise be to Jesus. We have been made sons, joint heirs with the, with Christ. Sons, we know the plans of our father. Even in our normal home setup, if you have someone maybe who works for you and maybe you've employed that person, there are things you can maybe discuss with your children, with your sons, and maybe not discuss with that person. Because servants do not know the plans of the master. But for us, Jesus said, I no longer call you servants. We've been made sons of the kingdom. We've been made joint heirs. The secrets of the kingdom have been revealed to us. They are no longer mysteries. We know them. We perceive them. Our spirit man is able to go into that realm. Praise be to Jesus. But I want to talk about this one person who was found without a wedding garment. The one person who was in that meeting, because these garments were not bought. You did not have to deserve it. You did not have to, to, to buy it. You, you were just invited. Once you were there, you were dressed. Hallelujah. And what does the Bible say? The minute we accepted Jesus Christ in our lives, we were clothed with righteousness. We were clothed. There is nothing you do about it. It is just a matter of you have accepted Jesus Christ. You are clothed. When God looks at you, he does not see anything else. He does not see the garment you came with when you were found. He does not see where you came from. He does not see all the other weaknesses you carried along. And maybe you have been struggling with. He sees righteousness. He sees the garment of righteousness. He sees the wedding garment. He has clothed you with righteousness. Praise be to Jesus. It's no longer the audio that, the, that he sees. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone beyond a new has come. When Christ died, he died in a sin. The Bible says he was made sin that we may become the righteousness of God. So he died as sin, but he rose again. He got born again. He, be, he became alive again. And that's exactly what happened to us. When you were not born again, you were dead in your trespass. But when you became born again, you became a new creation. You were raised in righteousness. You were dressed in the wedding garment. Everyone in that wedding has been given a wedding garment. But there is this one guest that did not have a wedding garment. And there is a scripture I want to read for us in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 10 verse 3. The Bible says, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Them being ignorant of the righteousness of God, they seek to establish their own righteousness. This man may, may be thought he, he looks smart the way he is. Maybe thought his garments look even better. Maybe thought he is okay the way he is. Because those garments were just given. They were for every guest. But he was found without it. What I want to drive at is that we have been dressed in righteousness. It must not, we must not rely on our own righteousness. If you rely on your own righteousness, you will never achieve. If as a church of Christ, we want to establish uh, what the code of rules and regulations that we call righteousness, that we regard to as righteousness, we will not be able to grow strong. We will not be able to enjoy the life we have been called to. I have always said the gospel is good news. You come as you are. You are acceptable as you are. You've been accepted as you are. The other day we were discussing someone was... Um, teaching us about the prodigal son. And the Bible reckons that he went and he ate with the pigs. I know we know this story. And when he came back to his senses, the Bible says he came back to his senses and he thought, wait a minute, my father has servants who are living. I will go back to my father and I will tell him I am sorry and I will become a son again. And when he, he came back to, to his father, the Bible reckons that the father saw him from very far and he recognized him and ran to him and embraced him and put on a robe on him 
Praise be to Jesus. What I want you to realize is there was no time for this man to go. He had been sleeping and eating with pigs. He was thinking of pigs. And pigs must be one of the things we regard as dirty, very dirty. He must have been dirty. He must have been stinking pigs. He must have been looking almost like pig. But when the father saw him, he went and dressed him with sonship. He went and put a beautiful robe on him. He did not tell him, go and shower first. He did not look for a tap. The Bible does not tell us about him taking him to a river or to a tap or to a shower somewhere. He put on a robe. The robe covered everything else. And that is what we are talking about. The day you were called into this family, you were given a robe of righteousness. Everything else, whether it was thinking or dirty, was covered. You became the righteousness. So when God looks at you, he sees righteousness. We must not expect people to bathe first so that they are dressed. People must be dressed and then they will deal with the dirt. That robe helps you to desire to be clean. That is the robe that will give you the power of sonship. When you have the power of a son, you can overcome anything else. When you have the power of sonship, there is nothing else that is dirty that you cannot uh, work with work on but once we re we realize that we are going to realize that we have become accepted and dressed in righteousness and dressed with the wedding garment and dressed with the robe for sonship and everything else is irrelevant everything else is covered everything else is forgotten the bible says our sins we are forgotten and thrown into a sea of forgetfulness god does not remember those things he has covered us with righteousness he has made us acceptable. He has clothed us with the garment of sonship. Praise be to Jesus. And I, I, uh, that now brings us back to the, I was talking about how us as Gentiles or you as a person who was in sin got accepted in the family of God, got accepted into this marvelous family. And, we be, and now that we are in this family, back to our story, our covenant between God and Abraham, God told Abraham, I will bless you and I will bless all nations through you. Now when we become uh, born again, when we become new creation, we, we deserve or we qualify the blessings of Abraham. So let me read the scripture that talks about that in Galatians chapter 3. As I finish, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 8. The Bible says, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. This was before even God started pursuing the children of Israel. This was before the Jews became the chosen ones. And then God had foreseen that, and he say, the Bible says, foreseeing that God would also justify the Gentiles and make us as chosen as the Jews were. Peter says we, are, we were once not a people, but now we have become the special generation, the chosen people, the very special people, the royal priesthood. We have become. And so now God had foreseen this and he had told Abraham that in you all nations shall be blessed. That includes you, the marvelous believer. And verse 14, he says, and that... The blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The blessing of Abraham becomes ours. We become partakers of the blessings of Abraham. We become, we qualify to be partakers of the blessing that God spoke to Abraham. If you read Genesis chapter 22, you're going to see the blessings that God spoke to Abraham and those blessings belong to us. And so, as I finish, I want us to declare those blessings are ours. I want you to declare them. These things we keep declaring on the marvelous believers show, we declare them, we believe them until we internalize them, until our spirit captures them, until we lay hold of them, until they manifest in our lives because that is our heritage. Praise be to Jesus. And so we continue to declare these things. We continue to believe them. We continue to feed our spirit man with these truths. And when they become rema into our spirit, they manifest. The physical does not have the power to resist what has been conceived in the spirit. 
Everything that you conceive in your spirit, the, the physical man cannot resist. It does not have that capacity. Once it is conceived in your spirit, it manifests in your physical. Praise be to Jesus. And so I want us to declare that we are included in the blessings of Abraham. Praise Jesus. I want us to declare this together as I pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless you tonight. We give you praise. We give you worship. Thank you, Jesus, because you died with us and you rose with us. You have seated us in the heavenly places. You have seated us in the right hand of the Father. You have seated us in the position of advantage, the position of dominion. You have qualified us to be called the children of the sons of God. You have qualified us to be partakers of the blessings of Abraham. And so we partake every blessing that was declared to Abraham in Genesis 22. We declare this evening as we discuss in this show that we have good health because that is our portion in the name of Jesus. Sickness and disease cannot prevail in our lives. We have good health. Abraham lived to a ripe good age. We declare we are living to a ripe good age in the name of Jesus. Premature death is not our portion longevity of life for us and for our children in the mighty name of jesus we declare increase and prosperity is our portion plenty until we become even a blessing to many in the mighty name of jesus we declare these blessings because the bible says we have become the Partakers of the blessings of Abraham by faith. By faith we partake these blessings. Our blessings are not just for us. They are for generations and generations to come. Just like you told Abraham and up to today we enjoy those blessings. Even for us, the blessings that you give us, they are for our children and our children's children. Even to the fourth and the sixth generation if Christ tarries in the name of Jesus. We are so blessed. The blessings of Abraham are ours by faith. We lay hold of them, we declare them, they manifest in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. And I know we are blessed. These blessings are ours. They manifest in our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much for staying with me. Uh, and let's meet again on Monday at 9.45 in this same platform, this same time. A marvelous believers show on Wema TV. We are always so glad to have you. Amen. Amen. <music>